Hi folks, Nat 971A here, back again uh, after um, being too busy to continue experiments and research and uh, up until now and uh, I think I've um, found some vital information that's been missing from uh, Tesla's patent on the utilisation of radiant energy. Uh, so I'll begin at the beginning of my research uh, and I'll have to start there. I was you won't uh, you won't follow what I'm getting on about. So anyway, it, it mentions it is well known that certain radiations such as those of ultraviolet light, cathodic, rink and rays of the light possess properties of charging and discharging conductors of electricity. The discharge being particularly noticeable when the conductor upon which the rays impinge is negatively electrified. Okay, so well, after reading this numerous times, I thought. This is really puzzling. I've got to do some further research. So I went digging and had a very quick look through uh, Tesla's articles on uh, rink and rays, and I found a reference. Okay, uh, rink and ray investigations by Tesla, uh, 22nd of April 1896, the very bottom of the article. The very well the article he mentions a reference uh, during my study of the behaviour of oils and other liquid insulators, which I am still continuing. It has occurred to me to investigate the important effects discovered by Professor J. J. Thompson. He announced some time ago that all bodies traversed by Rankin radiations become conductors of electricity. So I kept digging and I found that J.J. Thompson wrote a couple of articles and the one that Tesla refers to is this top one here on the discharge of electricity produced by the Rankin Rays Proceedings of the Royal Society 1896-59-274 So I went looking for this article and couldn't find it anywhere on the net so I went to the Royal Society of London and bought the article uh, for $8 so I went here, royalsociety.org and I did a search actually it gave the wrong website royalsocietypublishing.org ok and I did the search from there JJ uh, Thompson on the discharge of electricity produced by the Ronkin rays and the effects produced on these rays and dielectrics anyway I bought that article for $8 right I recommend that everyone get their hands on this article. It contains very important information that's not included in the Tesla patent and it would apply, I would imagine, to the grey tube, Moray's device, uh, you name it. Anyway, basically in this article, JJ uh, Thompson is experimenting with Rankin rays uh, and I'll show you here a little drawing of his device. Okay, this is the uh, device that he's using. Uh, from my understanding it's like a it's like a vacuum tube and down here um, he's got a what they refer to as a, a coaxial insulated cylinder which I'm theorizing is the same as Tesla's insulated plate. Uh, they're conducting experiments with Rankin rays at low vacuum pressure and what's very important in this article is that it's basically saying that uh, the, the Rankin rays um, come out from the electrode at, at straight, straight, in, you know, straight lines hit the insulated, um, I'm going to refer to it as an insulated plate, but it's actually a, a cylinder or a Faraday cylinder, what they call it in this experiment and uh, upon hitting the insulated uh, plate uh, it produces uh, around about 300 volts on the electroscope. Right. Now what's missing from the Tesla patent is contained in this document uh, and it's described how the experiment was um, constructed and conducted. Uh, so basically what's missing is that the 
uh, Faraday cylinder, coaxial cylinder, insulated plate, whatever you want to call it, um, was pre-charged using uh, two methods. One was using a, an electrophorus, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, I had to look it up. Uh, basically it's a, a, a device for um, uh, turning a, a metal plate uh, to have a, a negative and positive static charge. It's, from what I gather it's like a, um, a temporary static charge, not to be confused with an electorate, I'll pronounce that correctly. Uh, I looked into both of those things and they're slightly different. Uh, so, from what I gather, this is my theory here, is that Tesla was pre-charging his insulated plate as per this experiment um, using an electrophorus. Now what that does is it, it, it charges the plate with a positive and negative charge and there are ways to uh, make the plate uh, one polarity. Uh, from what I gather, um, you can make it negative or positive. So if you, if you refer back to Tesla's patent, he mentions that it was a negative charge. So he's removing the positive static charge uh, from the plate. And I imagine then at that point he's insulating it so that charge can't, can't escape. Now, in these experiments, once that's been done, they're firing the rink and rays at the insulated plate and lo and behold they're getting 300 volts charge. So this makes you think that, or made me think anyway, that the, uh, this would apply to possibly the grey tube, Moray's device, possibly the charge receiving grids in the grey tube have a, I'm assuming at this point, a positive static charge applied to them. Uh, and possibly the antenna in the Moray device has a static charge. Um, but at this point, look, I, I thoroughly recommend that everyone get their hands on this article. There was another experimenter also doing the same experiment prior to Thompson. I'd recommend you refer to that as well. His name was Gene. Uh, Gene. The other chap that was uh, doing the experience was Jean Perrin. Uh, he was a Frenchman and he wrote this article here, uh, New Properties of the Cathode Rays. And he wrote a couple of other articles. Uh, New Experiments on the Cathode Rays, Jean Perrin, 1895 December. So he was conducting that same, pretty much the same experiment as Thompson was doing, but uh, earlier. So I'd recommend that you read both those articles to get a really good understanding of what's going on. Basically, in the Thompson article, he's saying, the following is the method of making the experiments. The two pairs of quadrants are connected together in the plate, charged to a high potential by an electrophorus or by a temporary connection with a large battery of small storage cells. Now I'm betting money that Tesla was using an electrophorus, that seems to be more logical at this point. It's a static charge uh, and he was, when you apply that, it applies a, 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 like a what I gather is a temporary positive and negative and you're removing one of those charges. Um, so it's one polarity, in his case the negative one. Uh, and that's the experiment I'm interested in at this point because it's so simple. Um, and so, yes, let the experiments begin. Um, I should also mention in the Thompson article, he mentions particularly that if the plate was not pre-charged with uh, this static charge, then uh, no, no 300 volts was, but was measured on the electric scope. Basically nothing was measured. So, um, Basically, I'm going to have to redo all my experiments. Uh, now, this is the um, apparatus that Perrin was using. It's pretty much the same sort of thing. Uh, he refers to it as a Faraday cylinder, which basically, from what I understand, is two cylinders insulated from each other. Uh, they're firing the Rinkin rays from there into there, and an electroscope at the end, measuring 
300 volts. Uh, I highly recommend you read through that article as well. So I'm going to end this video with, um, you know, I think everyone needs to start researching what an electro for us is, if you don't know what it is. There's plenty of references on the net. Uh, start doing some basic experiments. I've already started some basic experiments and going to apply it to my insulated plate and redo the experiments. So, let's get to it.